Bora TV. The world is thinking. Indeed, one of the most interesting aspects of the opposition is the role of women, who have literally become the face of the opposition. Look closely at this face and this pose and this poster. The same woman. In 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini called the Shador, a woman's black garb, the flag of the revolution. And for the first decade, it symbolized the status of women in the Islamic Republic, women undercover, going back in time. But 30 years after the revolution, there are very different faces. Today's generation is far more diverse and constantly pushing the envelope. Short jackets, jeans, scarves pushed as far back. In fact, I often wonder about the physics of how these women get their scarves so far back and yet they don't fall. In both substance and style, even daring to hold fashion shows that introduce more color and show more form and even a bit of fun compared with the women in their black shadows. Two trends, both unintended by the revolutionaries, have changed the life of women. The first is education. The Shah promoted education among girls but many traditional families didn't send their girls beyond elementary school. They were afraid of being exposed to uh, miniskirts and makeup. But they did start sending their girls after the revolution. They thought their girls would be more protected in advanced education. As a result, today, 74% of girls are literate, compared with 25% in the early 1990s. Today, Iran has the highest female-to-male ratio in primary school in the world. <laughs> Iran has won the highest UN award for closing the gender gap in education between boys and girls. Since 2002, the majority of students at universities are female, today over 64 percent. The second trend is Iran's family planning program. After the revolution, the regime called on women to breed an Islamic generation, and boy, did they. Iran's population soared from, almost doubled, from 34 million in a decade to 62 million. It was the moment that the government of God plummeted to earth and realized it couldn't feed, clothe, house, educate, and employ all those numbers. And the demographics were important politically, too, because the young voted. To reduce family size, Iran's mullahs went to the mosques and said, fewer children in a family created more resources for a child's future, for a child's development, and for healthier children. The government also said that fewer children meant more resources for national defense and ensuring regional security. Iran totally reversed course. Everything in Iran today is free. Condoms, the pill, Norplant, IUD, vasectomy, the, the water tower in Tehran is very close to the vasectomy, free vasectomy clinic, and it says in English and Farsi, vasectomy clinic here. <laughs> Iran also recruited 35,000 women to go door to door, even in rural areas, to preach the benefits of family planning. The program has been one of the most successful in the world. The birth rate is down from seven children per family to two. 
winning both United Nations and American awards for effective family planning.